Good evening. I'm Eugene Chan with Straight Talk. Mrs. Kerr Lam is with us again tonight. Last week, she told us about the political development and the housing situation of Hong Kong. Welcome, Mrs. Lam, again. Um, as you know, Hong Kong has been very competitive as an international financial center. We still maintain number three in the world, and a ranking from the World Competitiveness Yearbook has rise from seven to fifth okay. again. So we are on the right track going up. However, in the last few shows, we have many guests from the business sectors. They are worried because of the travel restrictions. We are losing a lot of our talents, especially in Singapore and other parts of the world. Are you concerned? I am concerned, uh, but at least uh, from the feedback that you have received, uh, Eugene, now the only problem that our business people uh, see uh, is the COVID restrictions. Mm. Uh, very few people talk about a national security law, which is a good thing. Uh, that, uh, that I can assure you, uh, no one said exactly. that has any effect yeah. at all. I met with uh, foreign chambers and so on. They said that we're not worried about national security law because our own country has a national security exactly. law. But their own countries are now opening up. There's no travel restrictions, mm -hmm. no vaccine pass, no mask wearing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But Hong Kong seems to be in a different world. In, indeed. So uh, I, I, I'm worried. Uh, that's why uh, as early as uh, 25th of March, when we still have cases, uh, almost uh, 10,000, I already announced a, ro uh, a roadmap to open up. Uh, so uh, in terms of uh, Im importation, uh, situations. Uh, we have lifted the ban on the nine countries. We have reduced the hotel quarantine period from 14 to seven days. We have streamlined the uh, PCR test in the airport and so on and so on, just to make it easier for um, travel from outside. Right. But of course, since other people are even opening up more, so by comparison, uh, they find Hong Kong very unbearable. Mm. So uh, I think sooner or later, sooner better than later, well, a decision will have to be made whether Hong Kong will align her uh, practices with the outside uh, world or uh, adhere to the current arrangements. But right. there's a price to pay. Yes. If we continue with the current res restrictions, I'm sure we will be paying a price. Right. Uh, See, and another matter that we often talk about is the Greater Bay Area, which is right next door yeah, to Hong Kong. Yeah. We've got set over 70 million population yeah. in the big market of Hong Kong. Do you think Hong Kong people are hungry enough to move into the, the mainland? Because as I we had interview last year, I told yeah. you some of the, the young doctors yeah. are not very keen to yeah. move over, despite yeah. they see a huge future. Yes, yes. So has the government done enough to entice people to move into GBA? Well, since the promulgation of the GBA Outline Development Plan, we have been doing a lot exactly to interest uh, uh, young people especially uh, to go into the GBA. But unfortunately, because of COVID restrictions, um, many of these uh, schemes have not been implemented as fast as we would like to see. For example, the uh, Youth Employment Scheme in the GBA. Mm. Uh, as far as professional services like medical doctors, engineers, and architects, and uh, uh, lawyers, and accountants, mm. the, uh, the one single means to attract them to GBA is policies. Right. Uh, if we could persuade the central government to give them uh, policies of easy entry, of uh, recognition of their professional status, of um, sort of freedom in operating the clinics yes, and yes. Uh, practices, I'm sure they will go because the market, as you said, Eugene, is huge. Yes. Uh, uh, but again, because of a COVID rule, some of the uh, work that we have been undertaking with the central government and with the provincial authorities have, have been impeded somewhat. But right. I'm sure the, uh, the groundwork has already been done and the uh, central support is there with a leading group on the GBA development uh, headed by the vice premier. Uh, so uh, the, the prospects remain really very good, but we just need especially our young people to go into and uh, stay there for a while and actually experience for themselves mm -hmm. the, um, the, the life there as well as the opportunities there. Right. Have you ever considered attracting them to come more to Hong Kong because like professional services, I mean, we, we, we do have um, manpower. Yeah. Is it possible to attract more of them to come to Hong Kong and use our services so that the whole economy will benefit because it's 70 million population? Yeah, 
No, this um, from north to south has already been happening for many years. Otherwise, Hong Kong would not be doing so well in terms of financial services. Uh, mainland enterprises are coming to list in Hong Kong to uh, set up offices yeah. in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. There are now 2,000 mainland companies uh, with um, regional offices or headquarters or um, local offices in Hong Kong. Uh, we have a large number of mainland students in our uh, uh, UGC funded mm -hmm, institutions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have a quality migrant scheme from the mainland. We have a mission of talents from mm -hmm, the mainland. Mm -hmm. All these figures actually are, are very robust. So people right. are worried that since 2019, because of the, uh, the attack and intimidation of mainlanders, uh, mainlanders do not like Hong Kong. That's not true. Uh, judging from the figures that the figures. I have seen, they are still coming. But that doesn't mean we need not do more promotion in right. the mainland, especially with the 25th anniversary. Okay. Uh, we have asked our five economic and trade officers, including the Beijing office, to do more publicity and promotion about the Hong Kong situation. Right. Um, also, let's move back to ah. the COVID pandemic. Ah. I mean, we have seen a, a recent increase in numbers. Yeah. So can we say the sixth wave is coming? If it does, are we more prepared this time? Um, my colleagues uh, in the um, health uh, area would not describe this as a sixth wave, but we have not um, actually gone out of the fifth wave. Uh, the All cases right, have come down significantly, but still hovering around yes. 200 and 300. Unlike uh, May last year, the fourth wave, the fourth wave ended with no local infections for half a year. Mm -hmm. So now it's a very different, different situation because of Omicron. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so uh, we are much, much better prepared um, to deal with and search in cases right. in terms of uh, testing capability, mm -hmm. in terms of isolation and quarantine facility, uh, in terms of uh, uh, drugs. It's a two effective uh, antiviral oral drugs. We have abundant supply. Right. Uh, in terms of vaccines, we are never short of the two vaccines. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we need is one is continue to uh, push up the vaccination rates, especially amongst the elderly and the young. Uh, secondly, is to still uh, observe the social distancing. Right. Um, that's why I'm sorry you invited me to dinner. I could not <laughs> accept yet. Uh, hopefully later in the year, we could have a dinner together with your outstanding uh, young persons. Young persons. Yes. Um, See, um, another, another method that was awfully brought up ah. in the last few shows were your provision of consumption vouchers ah. and the employment support scheme. Yes. That has been very helpful. Yes. But having said that, all the businesses are still suffering. I know, I know you don't have a crystal ball, mm. but where do you see this going? I mean, when, when do you see some light at the end of the tunnel? Well, much depends on the uh, lifting of the restrictions. Uh, uh, actually, Hong Kong bounces back quite fast. Last year was uh, real GDP growth year on year of 6.1%. Uh, the unemployment figures uh, for the period uh, March to May, as a result of the relaxation of the social distancing measures, has already dropped from 5.5 uh, uh, to 5.1. So this, this measures the degree of the uh, bouncing back is, is very good. Uh, so once the COVID restrictions have been lifted, we start to see tour tourists coming to Hong Kong. Uh, I think we'll be doing well because uh, Hong Kong actually is short of labor. Right. We have been suffering from an acute shortage of labor for some time, but the, uh, the fifth wave have uh, really hit us hard. So uh, thank you for mentioning uh, the two initiatives of the uh, consumption voucher and the employment support scheme. Uh, throughout the COVID period, uh, uh, we have rolled out uh, quite a number of these uh, effective measures in order to protect the jobs. Mm -hmm. Because uh, once a business uh, was closed and uh, people lay off, uh, it becomes very, very difficult and painful uh, for the people. Mrs. Lam, one area that we must touch on is the geopolitical tension between mm -hmm. motherland and the rest of Western mm -hmm. countries, especially the U.S. Um, it's been very tough for Hong Kong. Some of our officials, including your good self, have been sanctioned. But Hong Kong as an international financial centre, we must continue to keep a relationship with the external partners. So do you see we have a role to play despite all this tension to maintain at least some dialogue amongst the business communities between different countries? 
Well, uh, certainly, Hong Kong uh, has to maintain her international status and connectivity. Mm -hmm. Um, not only for the sake of the Hong Kong economy and the Hong Kong people, but also for our country. Uh, uh, throughout history, Hong Kong has been performing that role, whether um, uh, our country was under sort of more closed environment or the reform and opening up and now advancing uh, to become a uh, middle uh, income uh, economy in time to come. So uh, I'm sure Hong Kong will continue to contribute. But in order to contribute, I've said this uh, on several occasions, where we must uh, uh, remember that Hong Kong's success uh, lies in her fundamentals, uh, which are all enshrined in the basic law, and that is um, the rule of law, the independence of judiciary, the free flow of capital, um, no controls over foreign exchange, and uh, the robust monetary policy, and, and so on and so on. Uh, so uh, we must try to strengthen each and every of these uh, aspects. But at the same time, the government has to be more proactive in uh, creating new markets uh, for the Hong Kong economy. We have to be more proactive in leveraging our strength as an international financial center uh, to support the national development strategy. One is the internationalization of the uh, renminbi, Second is the, uh, the pursuit of green finance, mm -hmm. uh, because the country has a carbon neutrality objective 2060. We have a carbon neutrality goal of 2050, and also in fintech. So uh, all these will need overseas talents. So Hong Kong never, never resists talents coming mm -hmm. in, right? Indeed, yes. So I, I hope that uh, we will be able to attract more talents to come to uh, work in Hong Kong. There's one very encouraging sign. Last June, I, uh, we introduced the uh, Global STEM Professorship Scheme. We are really targeting the uh, very distinguished scientists at the overseas renowned universities. And uh, uh, we are very successful. Right. Uh, I think we have already uh, granted three batches of nominated professors uh, from the several universities, mm -hmm. and they are coming. Right. So this is, uh, this is the, uh, the sort of attraction right. of Hong Kong, because other than the uh, high property prices, Hong Kong is a very livable city. Yeah. We've got some nice country parks yeah. as well, yes. Mrs. Lam, another area we must touch on uh, with the civil service. Yeah. You've been here for serving Hong Kong for the last 42 years, and we're very happy to hear that you want to contribute to the new civil service college because like a few weeks ago, we had uh, KK Ling and Eric Ma coming, and oh. they both said that the blame culture of Hong Kong people has made a lot of civil servants <laughs> being very protective of themselves. Yeah. And even recently, there are news report uh, sort of blaming our administrative officers for not mm. doing their jobs properly. Yeah. Um, although it's not, it's, it's not a fair statement, how would you contribute in this part of experience sharing to the civil service so that they'll be able to be able to up against the new, new, um, new Hong Kong, so to speak? Well, well, when I took office, I have uh, announced that we need to set up a dedicated civil service college. Mm. Uh, some people were queried, um, civil service is about training. What's the point of having a physical building? But personally, I think a physical building is very important because it instilled that sense of pride amongst the civil servants. It will help to uh, develop that aspirate the core, that team spirit, that mm -hmm. we all go into the civil service college to be trained, to exchange ideas. And then we all come out, we're very proud to be the Hong Kong, a member of Hong Kong civil service. So um, the, uh, the training is a very important part. And um, my advice to my uh, fellow uh, colleagues is, uh, at the end of the day, is this the public interest? Mm. Uh, so uh, we don't have to be too concerned about uh, people's uh, criticisms or blaming us for this and that. We have to convince ourselves and have the conviction uh, that we are doing the right things and have the passion uh, for Hong Kong and never give up any opportunity to uh, improve uh, the way that we deliver service uh, for the people of Hong Kong. Um, so uh, I still believe we have a very good civil service. It's mm. just that uh, over the years, um, somehow uh, they have not been able to perform uh, as brilliantly as they should because of the undue politicization 
particularly in the Legislative Council, and sometimes a bit unfair uh, commentary uh, by the media. Mm -hmm. yeah. now, from an earlier news report, we heard that you are not interested in, or you thought you don't have the ability to set a new think tank in Hong Kong. You mentioned that setting up a think tank might interfere with the work of the successor. Then what is your experience with other think tanks in Hong Kong? Have you found them useful throughout your 42 years of service to Hong Kong? Well, I do receive a lot of reports uh, from uh, these uh, think tanks, and I do read uh, the reports. Uh, they do um, contain uh, useful ideas, but at the end of the day, it's a matter of execution. Mm. That's why uh, I have always, in uh, private meetings with uh, these uh, think tank leaders, I said, yes, you have good ideas, better come in <laughs> and, <laughs> come in and deliver <laughs> your brilliant ideas. It's so easy to talk, is that right? Yes. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, executing is the, is the litmus test of whether right. that idea works in a place like Hong Kong. Uh, but as far as myself is concerned, it's just a, a, a personal character uh, because I know the government so well and I have a deep involvement in a lot of the policies and projects. So uh, for an, uh, a retired chief executive to say something about these projects and policies now under the leadership of a new government uh, would cause a bit confusion or unnecessary right. speculations and so on. Uh, uh, I am not sort of uh, demeaning the uh, value of uh, think tanks. I'm just talking about myself. Right, yes. Yeah. Ms. Lam, many people mm. see you as a very tough lady, more like an iron lady. Mm. And you know, just before we come in to do the show, yeah. many people said to me, the Mrs. Lam that we see is a very different Mrs. Lam. It's very approachable, very relaxed. But having said that, leaving a job and a position that one has passion has never been easy. In April, you indicated the family was the most important factor that draw you to the end of yeah. the tenure. Um, you're still very young and energetic and obviously knowledgeable. What is your key priorities after the 1st of July? I'm not very young and energetic. <laughs> I'm very exhausted uh, after having worked all these years. So I'm looking for uh, rest, uh, spending time with my uh, family and traveling. Traveling. Because I, I did travel very extensively, but every time is uh, for official functions. So I do not get to see the place and interact with the people. Mm -hmm. So I would start to travel, um, perhaps starting with the mainland after a certain quarantine. Right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but I do look forward uh, to traveling because over the years I have uh, uh, made friends with uh, people in other places, uh, particularly in Singapore. So uh, it's, uh, it's a personal uh, wish to be able to visit uh, these friends and to uh, share with them what I have gone through in a very challenging five Indeed. years. Yes. You also mentioned that sanctions have drawn you closer yeah. to Mr. Lam and your two <laughs> sons. How are you going to spend more time with them? Obviously you will, but they have jobs and they have studies and how are you going to allocate time with no, them? I always believe that uh, uh, you don't really need to always see each other in order to maintain that, uh, that intimacy. And after all, grown-up sons are they have their own life. So, right. but at least if I have more time, I can uh, have video calls with them. I can uh, check out right. uh, whether they are fine and, uh, and so on. So uh, some, some private time uh, becomes uh, very essential for me. Right. Yeah. Do you think it's unfair or, I mean, for your family to sort of pay some sort of sacrifice for you being in this job? And how would you advise people who are interested into public service in the future? It's difficult to say whether it's fair or unfair uh, because uh, once uh, somebody, somebody like myself has made up my mind uh, with the support of a family, then you have to go all the way. Mm. You cannot look back and say, oh, had I not done this job, it would be much better. And so family support remains very important. So uh, I would uh, advise uh, 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 people who want to join the government and to take up important positions, that they better have a clear understanding <laughs> of their family yes. and uh, try to uh, secure their understanding and preferably support uh, before they take on the job. Right, yeah. Mrs. Lam, you have one minute and I want to ask you, how would you want people of Hong Kong to remember Carrie Lam? 
um, somebody who has uh, spent her lifelong uh, career to to serve the people of Hong Kong and to build Hong Kong into a much much better place. Thank you, Mrs. Lam, and we wish you a, a very happy travelling at least in <laughs> July and August. Thank you very much. Thank you, C. Over these two weeks, Mrs. Lam has given us insights on everything about her job as the Chief Executive of Hong Kong, including the political development, housing, COVID difficulties, the future of our city and her personal life as well. Again, on behalf of our viewers, we wish her all the best with her family and enjoy her post-retirement travel. Have a good week and good night.